Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy! Woo! So in this video we will actually be doing some calculations for suspensions. So if you haven't already seen the first video which I gave you the introduction, gave you that baseline knowledge that you need in order to move on to the calculations. So make sure you check that video out. I'm going to put a link down here in the descriptions for you. So let's dive right in. Now before we go into the calculations, I just wanted to clarify a few things. You want to make sure you assume that all medication strengths, dosage forms, formulations are correct. Next, assume that all medications in prescription can be compounded as suspensions. Lastly, neglect the weight of the powder inside the suspension unless specified. So the whole idea here is that we're going to be making suspensions where we're putting really fine powder, fine particles into a bottle, and then we're basically going to add a suspending agent, and that will be your suspension, right? I'm sure it's much more complicated than that when you're making it, like when they manufacture it. But when we do that, the powder that we put in the bottle, I want you guys to neglect the weight, okay? So with the powder in the bottle, if I add 100 ml, it's still 100 ml in that bottle, okay? The weight of the powder is not going to play a role. So for this video, I'll be going through questions 1 to 5 simply because it's a lot of slides and I don't want to record for too long. So this is exactly how things are going to look, where you have a prescription here, you have the doctor's information on the top. In the middle, we have the patient's information, including the weight, which may come into play sometimes. And in the body of the prescription, we actually give you the information required for you to compound this suspension. Another thing I wanted to point out is the table on the top right, available in pharmacy. So whatever the prescription has is basically what the doctor ordered, right? But then you have things in pharmacy that will help you compound that specific suspension. So question number one, determine how much amoxicillin active ingredient is needed in milligrams. Now as per the prescription, right, it's 250 milligrams of amoxicillin per teaspoon. And this is why it's very important for you to know the conversions, right? Know what teaspoon means, know what tablespoon means, know what fluid ounce means, okay? Just make sure you memorize that and familiarize yourself with that because it's definitely going to come up. So next, cherry syrup QS add up to 100 ml. What does that mean? That simply means that the total volume of the suspension is going to be 100 ml. Okay, so you're going to add this powder to the bottle, and then you're going to QS with the cherry syrup, and then you're going to end up with 100 ml. Now, if 250 milligrams is required to make 5 ml, then 5,000 milligrams will be required to make 100 ml. Okay, so therefore, that will be the answer of active ingredient of amoxicillin that will be required for this prescription. Next, how many whole capsules of amoxicillin 500 milligrams are required to compound this? Now amoxicillin, according to what's available in our pharmacy, comes as 500 milligram capsules. Very easy. Now in order to get 5,000 milligrams of active amoxicillin, we would need how many capsules, right? So then you take 5,000 milligrams, you divide it by the strength of each capsule, which is 500 milligram in this case, and you get 10 capsules. So therefore you need 10 capsules of amoxicillin 500 milligram in order to prepare this suspension. And here is the compounding procedure for this prescription. So the first thing you wanna say is that you wanna pre-calibrate the size of a bottle, right? So let's say a four ounce bottle, which makes more sense, right? Because the total volume that you need is 100 ml. So you're not, you probably don't wanna use a 100 ml bottle. I don't even think they have that, but you get the point. So you wanna pre-calibrate that. And usually how they do this is that they simply put water in the bottle. So in this case, it gets to 100 ml and then you take like a marker or a pen or whatever it is and just mark it at 100 ml. I know it's kind of dumb, but you still have to do this. Empty 10 capsules of amoxicillin into a glass mortar. So you must specify that it's a glass mortar. And we will see later on in this video that sometimes you want to use a wooden mortar. 
Now you want to triturate the powder until fine particles are formed. Add a small amount of cherry syrup slowly to wet the powder with additional trituration. Now this is the part where some people may get confused with. You're not adding all the cherry syrup into the glass mortar, okay? You're just adding a little bit to cover the powder, right? The fine particles that you put in the glass mortar. So you're kind of wetting the powder. Pour the mixture into the pre-calibrated bottle. QS with cherry syrup to 100 ml. Label the bottle and then add the required auxiliary label. Prescription number two, we have this patient here getting lenalidomide and the amount required for the prescription is here for you. And then we're gonna QS with cherry syrup to 120 ml. For the direction, the patient is gonna be taking 10 ml by mouth once daily. And this is what we have available in the pharmacy. And as you can see here, which is a little different from what we had in the previous prescription, is that I have the weight of the capsule here. The fact that you have lenalidomide 20 milligram capsule does not mean it weighs 20 milligram capsule. I mean, if you're watching this video, preparing for the New York State compounding exam, or you're in pharmacy school taking pharmaceutics, where you have to do recitation, and you have to compound suspensions, all I'm trying to say is that you, probably, you, you should know what I'm talking about, right? It's 20 milligram capsule, right? That's the strength, but the weight of the capsule, there's other inactive ingredients in there, so the weight is always gonna be more than the strength of the capsule, okay? I'm just gonna assume that you guys knew that, but I included it, I explained it to you, even if you didn't. So let's jump right into the questions. Question number one, determine how much lenalidomide active ingredient is needed in milligrams. Now, as per the prescription, the amount that's needed is 0.5 milligrams per kilogram of lenalidomide is required. Now the patient weighs 280 pounds, and if you convert that to kilograms, you have 127.27 kilograms. Now 0.5 milligrams multiplied by this, you get 63.63 milligrams. So therefore you need 63.63 milligrams of lenalidomide to fill this prescription. Question number two. How many whole capsules of lenalidomide 20 milligrams are required to compound this? So once again, lenalidomide, according to what's available in the pharmacy, there's 20 milligram capsules. Now in order to get 63.63 milligrams of active ingredient lenalidomide, we would need 63.63 milligrams divided by the 20 milligrams per capsule, right? That 20 milligram is also active ingredient. So that's why you're dividing it by that, right? And not the weight. So that you get 3.18 capsules, which you always have to round up to because the question is saying how many whole capsules, okay? So in this case, you have to round up, right? To make 3.18, right? To get 3.18 capsules, you need four capsules, right? In order to actually compound that. So the answer will be four capsules of lenalidomide is required. Now, if the question said how many capsules, the answer will be 3.18 capsules. If it says whole capsules, you must round up and it's going to be four capsules. What weight in milligrams of the powder will supply the amount of lenalidomide required for this prescription? Now, each 20 milligram capsule of lenalidomide weighs 50 milligrams. So therefore, we need 63.63 milligrams of lenalidomide or 3.18 capsules. If one capsule weighs 50 milligrams, then 3.18 capsules, 159 milligrams. So you're going to need 159 milligrams of lenalidomide powder. So how would you describe this? So first you're gonna pre-calibrate a four ounce bottle, empty four capsules of lenalidomide onto a weighing paper. You're going to weigh out what you need, 159 milligrams of the lenalidomide powder, and you will place it in a glass mortar. You want to triturate the powder onto fine particles, and then add a small amount of cherry syrup once again, just to cover the top of the powder a little bit while you're still triturating. Pour the mixture into the pre-calibrated bottle, QS with cherry syrup to 120 ml, label the product, and add the required auxiliary label. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly how your compounding procedure should be outlined. 
You must use all the specific key terms that I talked about in the first video. Next prescription. We have a patient here getting Cipro floxacin, and this one looks a little bit different, right? There's no amount listed to the right of the Cipro floxacin, and then we have cherry syrup, and then in the directions, they have 25 milligrams per kilogram per day, one teaspoon by mouth, four times a day for six days. And in the pharmacy, we have 250 milligrams of Cipro. We have some cherry syrup. Okay, so now let's tackle these questions. Question number one, determine how much ciprofloxacin active ingredient is needed in milligrams. So let's go back to the prescription. There's nothing next to the ciprofloxacin. So is the answer zero? No, it's not zero. <laughs> You may see this once in a while, okay? They may do this if they wanna like trick you a little bit, but just try to make sense out of it, okay? When you check the SIG, they have some more information saying 25 milligrams per kilogram per day. First of all, when they say 25 milligrams per kilogram per day, what are they referring to? The active ingredient, right? They are referring to the ciprofloxacin. So even though they didn't put it next to it, that's exactly what you're referring to. So let's go back to question number one. Use the 25 milligrams per kilogram per day. You find that you get 16, 25 milligrams per day, but the prescription is for six days, okay? So you must multiply to get 9750 milligrams of ciprofloxacin active ingredient for the whole prescription. Question number two, how many whole capsules of ciprofloxacin, 250 milligrams are required to compound this. So we know that ciprofloxacin is available as 250 milligram capsules in the pharmacy. So in order to get 9750 milligrams of ciprofloxacin active ingredient, you must take that number and divide it by 250 milligrams per capsule, you should get 39 capsule. This is the exact number, right? So you don't need to round to 40 or something like that. <laughs> it will be 39 capsules. What weight in milligrams of powder will supply the amount of ciprofloxacin required for this prescription? Each 250 milligrams capsule weighs 275 milligrams. We know that we need 7950 milligrams of ciprofloxacin or 39 capsules, right? So if one capsule weighs 275, then 39 capsules will weigh 10,725 milligrams. How many milligrams of ciprofloxacin will the patient receive per dose? As per the prescription, I have it right here for you guys, 25 milligrams per kilogram per day. So 16, 25 milligrams per day. Patient is receiving it four times per day. So you divide it, you should get 406.25 milligrams per day. To compound this, I have it here for you guys, very similar to the first and second prescription. Next we have Ms. Kiki Palmer, and she got a prescription for endomethacin, one milligrams per kilogram per dose, with the suspended agents of Aura Plus, Aura Sweet, in equal parts, and DTD number 40 simply means make 40 doses. And then we have the directions here. On the top right, this is what's available to us in the pharmacy. Now let's tackle these questions. Question number one, determine how much endomethacin active ingredient is needed for this prescription. As per the prescription, there's one milligram per kilogram per dose of endomethacin. If you do the math, you should get 57.27 milligrams per dose. You multiply that by 40 doses, you get 2290.8 milligrams. How many whole tablets of endomethacin, 25 milligrams, are required to compound this? You divide 2290.8 milligrams by 25 milligrams, you will get 91.6 tablets, and you round that up to 92 tablets. What weight in milligram of powder will supply the amount of endomethacin required for the prescription? So you find out the weight for each tablet, so it's 39 milligrams in this case, you multiply that by 91.6 tablets, you should get 3572.4 milligrams. How many ml of each syrup is required? So according to the prescription, we have Aura Plus and Aura Sweet, and we are going to be using equal parts. So in order to determine that, we need to know the total volume of the prescription that we will be making. So according to the SIG, the patient is going to get half a teaspoon by mouth four times a day for 10 days. 
So if you do the math, you should get 100 ml total, and that will be the total amount of suspension that we will be making. Now, equal parts in this case simply means the same volume. So if we have 100 ml and we are dealing with two things here, you would divide by two to get the parts. So we will have two parts, and each part is going to be 50 ml. Let's assume that we had three ingredients, right? So aura plus, aura sweet plus something else. Then if you wanted to do equal parts, you would divide the 100 by three, and each part will be like 33 point something. So in this case, the answer will be 50 ml of each syrup. And the compounding procedure for Rx4 is here for your information. Rx number five, we have a patient getting diltiazem. 250 micrograms per kilogram per day, glycerin, 2% volume over volume, simple syrup, QS to 90 ml, and on the top right, this is what's available to us in the pharmacy. Determine how much deltiazem active ingredient is needed in milligrams. Now, as per the prescription, is 250 micrograms per kilogram per day. If you do the math, you should get 15.34 milligrams per day. And according to the direction, the patient is getting half a teaspoon by mouth three times a day. So that's 7.5 ml per day. Now we have a 90 ml suspension, and if you divide that by 7.5, you should get 12 days. Now 15.34 milligrams times 12 days will give you 184.08 milligrams. And that's how much diltiazem you have in the whole script. How many whole tablets of diltiazem, 10 milligrams, are required to compound this? Once again, straightforward, right? You take the 184.08 milligrams, you divide it by 10, you should get 18.4 tablets, but you have to round up. So the answer is 19 tablets. What weight in milligrams of powder will supply the amount of diltiazem required for this prescription? Each diltiazem is 10 milligram tablet, but it weighs 17 milligrams. You multiply that by 18.4 tablets that's required, you're going to get 312.8 milligrams. How many ml of glycerin is required? As per the Rx, you need glycerin 2% volume over volume. Now, whenever you see volume over volume, just know that you're referring to volumes, right? <laughs> so in this case, the units must reflect that. So what do I mean? V over V doesn't really tell you much, right? But the rule is always true. Both the numerator and the denominator is going to be in mLs, but the denominator is always going to be 100 mLs simply because of the percent, okay? And the percent means 100. The number in the front of the percent is always your numerator. So in this case, it's 2. So 2% 2 volume over volume is simply saying 2 mLs per 100 mL. That's the concentration. But our Rx is asking for 90 mL. So you set up a proportion and solve for 90 mL. You should get 1.8 mL of glycerin required. And this is exactly how you will compound this. So that will be the end of this video so this is the first part the next video i'm going to go through questions six to ten i'm going to show you things that i didn't show you in this video so it's just going to get more complicated just to get you guys more comfortable with it so if this video was helpful make sure to like comment subscribe guys help me reach 2000 subscribers um, i'm going to be putting out a lot of videos so stay tuned it's going to be very very interesting videos and of course, if it was helpful, make sure to share it also. And please leave questions in the comments, okay? We could have discussions. If there is something that you want me to go over again, just let me know. I could do a one-on-one -on -one or I could do a video. Just feel free to let me know. Until you watch that first video, if you jump right to this, if you don't have that basic knowledge, it's going to be very difficult. So make sure you check it out. Connect with me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.